Hey guys, my name is Shreyas, and welcome to Simple Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be talking about separation techniques. What are separation techniques? Separation techniques are simply techniques used to separate contents of mixtures. Now, when you're a little kid, you probably played with Legos. If you didn't, then I don't know where you came from but you're still welcomed here. If you don't know what Legos are, you know, go search them up. They're very cool things. Uh, but anyways, so, with Legos, if you were OCD like me when I was a child, you might have classified and separated the Legos out into different piles, you know, maybe separated them out based on their color or separated them out based on how big each block was. In the same sense, scientists often want to separate contents of mixtures in order to analyze them separately. And there are many separation techniques that scientists use, but in AP Chemistry you're going to be using typically these three specific ones. So let's go ahead and talk about each one of them in detail. The first one is filtration. So filtration is using a simple mesh to separate out contents. So where would we use this? So typically, where you'd use this is when you have a solid and you have a liquid in a container, like sand and water. That's a good example. So in order to separate the, two, the solid from the liquid, what you do is you take um, filter paper, typically, and you would pour the liquid through the filter paper in order to separate out the contents. So what happened is, since the filter paper has this mesh, the liquid be, would be able to flow out, but the solid would stay. So then you'd have the solid and you'd have the liquid separated from each other. Um, you've probably seen this too if you cook. You know, whenever you boil pasta and cook pasta, you're going to have to boil it with water. And once you're done, you're going to probably have some leftover water. So what we'd, you do, same thing, you have a solid and you have a liquid. So what you're going to do? You're going to filter the water out. You're going to put the pasta into a filter, and the water is going to all drain out, leaving you just the pasta. Okay. Now this is a little bit more complicated. You've probably never heard of this before. Distillation. Distillation is used whenever uh, scientists have two liquids that they want to separate. So let's talk about the setup of a distillation apparatus. So typically what happens here is you have two liquids in this container right here and the two liquids have separate boiling points. Now let's review. What's a boiling point? A boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid will turn into a gas. So it, within this substance, the two liquids here have different boiling points. Let's say you had one liquid with a boiling point of 70 degrees and another liquid with a boiling point of 100 degrees. So what you do is maybe set the hot plate to have a temperature of 85 degrees. So only the liquid with 70 degrees would boil and turn into a gas, and the liquid which is boils at 100 degrees is going to stay. So what will happen is that will that liquid will boil, and it will come up here as a gas into something called a condenser. In the condenser, you have a tube on the inside, and then you have water on the outside, which typically comes from a sink. And the water cools the glass, therefore um, cools the glass, which then cools the gas. It's kind of a tongue twister within the condenser. And that, that cooled gas is going to turn back into a liquid, and it'll drip out here, and that is called a distillate. All right. The last thing that you might use is paper chromatography. Now, there's different types of chromatography, but this is typically the one you'll use. Okay, so what is paper chromatography? Paper chromatography is a way of separating, um, again, liquids from each other. And uh, this can be used whenever the boiling points are not the same, uh, or are the same, sorry, for a liquid, and you still want to look at them separately. So what you do is you take this special chromatography paper and you dip it into the solution that you have here. Um, and what will happen is that the liquid will begin to rise. So let's say the liquid here consists of a green liquid, a 
blue liquid and a red liquid all mixed together. So what will happen is they'll start to rise and they'll separate out into different colors like this. Now, the interesting thing here is that the liquids which separates at the very bottom, so in this case that would be the green liquid, is a liquid which is least chemically like the paper. It does not have the same chemical properties as the paper. So that's why that's why it's not attracted to the paper as much, so it only stops coming up at the bottom. However, the, the liquid at the top is has properties which are very similar to the paper, um, so that's why it's at the top, because it ha it's, more, it's more attracted, so it's going to keep going up and up when these other liquids come down. So this red liquid is the liquid which is most attractive to the paper, therefore more, most chemically similar to the paper, and the blue is kind of halfway, it's kind of like the paper, kind of not, and the green one is not like the paper at all, which is why it's at the bottom. And here's another thing. Um, this is called the retention factor. The retention factor describes typically how much a liquid is like the chromatography paper. And the way it's like a numerical, a quantitative way of describing how the um, how how similar the liquid is to this on paper chemically. So the way we measure that is the distance from the origin to the center. So let's say for the uh, for the blue liquid, the origin would be the very bottom where the liquid started rising up. Okay, so for the blue liquid, it would be the origin to the center. The center, that would be right here. So from, again, here all the way up to there, divided by the distance from the origin to the solvent front. So that would be from here, the origin, to the solvent front, which would be typically here. And typically your solvent is going to be water. So these three liquids would separate out and then the water would keep just going up and up until that would stop. So you take the distance from the origin to the center and um, divide it by the distance from the origin to the solvent front, which is all the way up here. And that will give you what's called a retention factor. So the higher the retention factor, the better chemical, the more chemically similar the substance is to the paper. And the lower the retention factor, the less the substance is like the paper. Okay, that's pretty much it for separation techniques. Separation techniques are as simple as that.